Vegan Bakery. Today I have a recipe for you. It's called a hummingbird cake. And I'm sure this has been trending recently. And this is actually a cake like from way back in the 70s. And I happened upon it because, you know, everybody's on. Stop stealing stuff. I'm stealing. All right. I am not stealing the recipe. I am stealing the idea and I am using my recipe. Right, you, well, you always do that. You make them better I than they were. I make them are. better. Right. And I veganize them and that's like way better anyway. Right. So, but the whole thing is that like about a month ago, I'm, I'm about a month like out of the times, but about a month ago on Facebook, there was this article that was trending and it was called, what was the most popular cake the year that you were born. And so, of course, I clicked on there and I wanted to see all the cakes. And so I'm 1970. 61? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I feel like. You oh, look like that, too. Hey, <laughs> I know. It, life is killing me, you guys. Life is just absolutely killing me. <laughs> my uh, cake during in 1973, my birth year, was a carrot cake. And I was like, well, I've already done a carrot cake like a million times. So I just kind of clicked forward and I was like, wow, hummingbird cake. So 1977 to 78 was the hummingbird cake. And I actually think that that's your birth year, right? I was born in 88. You were not. You <laughs> wish you were born in 88. I was 77. Yes, you were 77. So we're pretty close in like the decade of my decade and Jason's decade. So we're going to show you guys how to make the hummingbird cake. And basically, I am taking my carrot cake recipe, which is very similar to what this cake originated as. And obviously, we're not using carrots, but we're going to replace that with some pineapple and banana. So basically, the hummingbird cake is a pineapple banana cake, and it is so amazing. Carrots are not vegan? Carrots are vegan, yes. So why are you using carrots? Because I don't want to make a carrot cake. Oh, because okay. I've made a carrot cake like a million times. Stop pulling my teats. I know, I want to make a hummingbird cake. All right. So let's make a hummingbird cake, you guys. But a bird is an animal. Well, we're not putting real hummingbirds oh, okay. into it. I'm just making sure. There's a little backstory to this, and like everybody hates, like they're like, oh my god, please stop talking. No, there no, no, no. If you don't listen, if you don't want to hear us talk, then leave. No, there is a shortened video. Click the links below if you just want the recipe and you don't want to hear this BS. I don't like your attitude. Forth, then you guys can click <laughs> to the shortened version. The hummingbird cake actually originated out of Jamaica. There's like a whole cool story to it, and so if you click my blog link to actually get the recipe. Get the backstory to this. It's really a cool story. So anyway, let's make a hummingbird cake. No hummingbirds were harmed in the making of Stop this Stop messing with animals. <laughs> All right. So what we are going to need is some flour, which I have here. Obviously, I talked about the pineapple. I do love orange zest, so that's my little spin on this recipe. I have some light brown sugar. I have some white sugar. This is, what the heck is this? I prepped this recipe like three days ago. This is baking soda and baking powder. Kind of professional art. <laughs> I can't remember what I did five minutes ago. That's because you're 60. <laughs> All right, I've got some cinnamon, some salt, a little bit of nutmeg, and there is oil in this recipe, but because I'm trying to go a little bit healthier in my old age, I am going to cut half of the oil with some applesauce. The egg replacer in this recipe is the almighty banana. And yes, you can replace eggs for a vegan recipe with banana, but not all the time. You know what? You have a, you have a course that's really popular right now. It is really popular, and that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Really quickly, I created an online course that you can join up for. The links are below if you want to really know how to replace eggs in vegan baking because honestly that is the biggest mystery in vegan baking is how to replace the eggs so yeah, you have 200 students in there i do and, and everybody loves so it so many people are happy about so it it's people. crazy so if you guys really want to learn a little bit more about how to replace eggs in vegan baking definitely click the links below um, because you know the banana is not the um, end all be all but it does definitely work in this recipe and congratulations 200 people that's not like some small little thing, you know, that's a lot of that's people. That's nothing to bark at, 
Right. Well, right. I mean, they loved it. Everybody really loved it. So definitely, if you want to click the links below to see if you're like, you know, somebody who is getting a lot of requests for vegan baking, even if you're not vegan, but you might have a home-based business, people have allergies to eggs nowadays, so this really will benefit you if you want to learn more about how to replace the eggs in your vegan baking. So, vegan baking mastery. Vegan baking mastery, guys. Check click the links below. That's such a so, shameless commercial, but yes, you know what? Totally. It, it, it really, people love it, are yeah, loving yeah, it. Yeah, totally. So okay. anyway, let's get back to the recipe. All right, all right. We have um, just some vanilla extract and some toasted pecans that I have toasted ahead of time. They look a little light. Yeah, somebody's been eating them. <laughs> somebody's been eating my nuts. <laughs> Get up close on that. I got it, son. Oh, <laughs> Every day I will get this done. And thank <laughs> God you're following a professional. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there is my pureed banana, and if you guys have checked out my how to freeze bananas and why you would ever freeze bananas, it is way easier than this. If you have super ripe bananas, you're gonna put them in your freezer, and you don't even have to go through the trouble of having a food processor. And when you say pureed bananas, how do you know when it's done? What is it supposed to look like? Oh, it's kind of like baby food. You should know that. You have your baby who used to eat probably pureed bananas, right? Yes, I used to eat them when he didn't finish them. That's right. Okay, so yeah, totally good question. Uh, pureed banana basically looks like baby food. And if you can't get a hold of fresh bananas, you can totally use baby food here. Really? Yeah. Well, it's just pureed bananas. Okay. All right, so similar to my carrot cake recipe, which is a super easy recipe to mix, we are going to put our sugars into the bowl, both the white and the light brown. So add in the oil. Again, I talked about wanting to go a little bit healthier. So I'm adding in some applesauce in place of the full amount of oil, but if you don't wanna use applesauce, get out of there, sugar. You can use the full amount of oil. Little bit of vanilla extract. You love that stuff. I do love it. Vanilla makes everything better. All right, next is our pureed banana. And I used one extra large banana for one cup of puree. So whatever you need to do to get to one cup of puree, whether it's one extra large or three mediums, like whatever, it's one cup of banana puree. The zest of an orange, which is not necessary, but I so do love this addition into this recipe. All right, so this is what I call a one bowl mix. It is super easy. We don't need a stand mixer or even a hand blender. We're mixing all of the wet ingredients into a big mixing bowl with a whisk. And then I'm going to just sift in the dry ingredients right into that. You know, one thing I always, when I watch you, mm. I don't bake, obviously. Yeah. I always feel like I'm thrown off by the time that it takes. Like, I always say to you, like, how do I know when to stop mixing? You're like, oh, just follow the recipe. And I'm like, well, I need to know yeah. what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what the video is wonderful for, is like you can actually see me doing the mixing of this recipe. And I mean, I, and that's the other thing that's really great about the blog is because I explicitly, explicitly write out the instructions of how to know when to stop. And it's like, just keep mixing until it's all incorporated. And actually, well, that's, a that's like right now, it's right. all incorporated, But that's the difference right? between the video, I think, and the blog. The blog yeah. actually, can yeah, really it gives give you, you a lot more information. Right. All right, so there is our banana cake batter, really. It's going to be subtly banana. It's not overly banana because the hummingbird cake is actually banana pineapple. So here is our batter. We are now going to add in our crushed canned pineapple. It doesn't have to be canned, but that's just easier for me, and we're going to fold that in. 
It looks like a very well mixed ingredient. You know what I'm saying? Like it feels very smooth and yeah. very. Yeah. Oh, and you smell that pineapple? We need smell a vision because, like, this the smell of the banana and the pineapple is awesome. So now I'm going to add in my toasted pecans. And of course, if you guys have a nut allergy, you can leave that out, absolutely. You can use whatever nut you prefer. I mean, we're kind of making it our own, right? You can sort of do that with these recipes when it comes to the add-ins. You know, I know typical recipes make eight inch layers, in which case, if you only have eight inch pans, you'll get two eight inch layers. But I'm like really digging the three layer cake lately. So I have three seven inch pans that I am going to just go ahead and grease with my professional bakery pan grease. And if you guys don't ever want stuck cakes in your life again, be sure to click the links below to grab all the recipes. Alright, so you don't really need the parchment paper, but I always do just for added insurance. I mean, if you're using my professional bakery pan grease, like, you don't really need it, but I like extra insurance in everything that I do. Alright, so line your pans with your parchment paper. Uh, I've got my pan grease going, and now you can have we're just going to put in our hummingbird cake batter. So now that our hummingbird cake is out of the oven, completely cooled, we're going to make a quick vegan cream cheese icing, ice this baby up, and we are eating hummingbird cake from 1978? Eight. 78. 78. I have some sifted confectioner's sugar that's going to go into the mixer bowl. I have a stick of vegan butter. That's some vegan mixing right there, boy. <laughs> You got that out in one scoop, huh? Yeah. That's, I've never seen that before. <laughs> the magic of vegan bacon. This vegan stuff throws a curveball and some bacon. I do like to use a little bit of almond extract in this. It's completely optional if you don't want to use it. So a teaspoon of that. And a teaspoon of vanilla. And that's a vegan teaspoon. That's right. <laughs> Not to be confused with a non-vegan teaspoon. <laughs> is made with a cream cheese filling and icing, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a twist on that today, whereas I did a vegan cream cheese filling, but I'm going to do a vegan buttercream icing because I wanna kinda of ice this naked cake style um, because, I mean, that's really a very popular style of icing cakes. I have to say, when I owned my bakery and this style of cake, came into trending and was like mainstream probably back in like 2013 I was really like eh, like seriously naked cake what a cop out but I am really digging the way that it looks and so obviously you guys can go ahead and ice this and decorate it any way that you'd like but I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a thin buttercream naked cake style and I'm going to decorate it with some fresh flowers
what do you think? Well, yes, sir, yes, sir. I already know it's good because I actually already made this recipe like a few weeks ago and it's amazing. I would never know it's vegan. Yeah, how would you know? Like, for real, people are dumb. Hey. I'm sick of everybody. I'm a non vegan, don't call me dumb. <laughs> This is good. Listen, if food is good and it doesn't have dead animals in it, like, why not? Mm. What well, knows that it doesn't have dead animals in it? Mm. That was good, dude. Dude, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was really good. All right, you taste the subtle banana. You definitely taste the pineapple coming through. The cream cheese filling. Oh, you're not supposed to? No, I'm just trying to oh. tell them what the cake tastes like because they're going to want to know what it tastes like so they just can so make it. Just make it and then worry about what it tastes no. like, you guys. Mm -hmm. Get the recipe. Descri uh, the link is in the description at GretchenVeganBakery.com. Just make it so that you know what it tastes like. Right. It's amazing. Teach us. Teach us wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, well that was the first video for season 8 with the return of Jason here at Gretchen's Vegan Bakery. If you haven't seen the intro to season 8 and you're wondering what the heck is going on, check it out here. The link for that video is below. We definitely had a lot of fun and we also know we have some major tweaking to do as far as audio and the echo that you're probably hearing. And we were a bit rusty after not working together for almost four years, so we will surely get better. I hope that you liked it. If you made it all the way through this video, thumbs up for you. You are awesome. I know a lot of people really can't stand this style of video, but so many of you really do. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I'll have the shortened, just the quick recipe video for those who don't want to hear us being ridiculous. All the links are below as always. And of course, the written recipe with more information is at Gretchen'sVeganBakery.com and that clickable link is also below. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has stuck with me through all of my major life transitions here with this channel and especially to my patrons on Patreon and my pals in PayPal. Without you guys, I would never have sustained to get to where I am now. So thank you is really just never enough. If you think that maybe you can help to support Gretchen's Bakery to continue for as little as a dollar a month, just click the links below to find out how. All right, guys, I hope you liked this recipe enough to want to try it. It is so good, and I know that you're going to love it, and it is super easy to mix. All right, well, that's it for me today. Until next time, happy vegan baking. Bye for now.